everyone, it's Sarah and welcome back to my channel. It is so good to see you guys today. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's a new series that I thought of that I'd love to do and it's like a book club series where I talk about a book, mostly thrillers, but I'm open to suggestions. So please comment down below if you'd like to see a video of me talking about another book that you like. But anyways, so I'm calling this book club Monday. I'm hoping to upload it on Monday, so we'll see. But it's just like a little book club. All the thrillers that I read or the books that I like to read have little discussions at the end of them. And I thought it'd be so fun to review it on camera and have open discussions down below in the comments with you guys. So I thought it'd be a really cool idea. I basically just do my makeup while I'm talking about it. It was a little hard to talk, as you'll see in this video about the book when I was concentrating really hard on my makeup, so I really tried. Editing Sarah's gonna really enjoy editing this video, I can tell. For this particular video, I just did my makeup without talking about anything about the makeup. Next week, I'm gonna try showing like what products I'm using just to like switch it up and see what you guys prefer because I don't even know what I prefer. So next week I will be naming the products. This week they're gonna be listed down below. Let's talk about the book we're reviewing this week. So the book I chose is All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda. I finished this last night and I did enjoy it. Obviously this video is going to have spoilers. I feel dumb saying that, but it's a book club book review type thing. There's gonna be spoilers. So if you haven't read this book yet, I suggest maybe either reading it before you watch this video or if you don't care just watch this video because you get to see me do my makeup too and yeah I think that's all I wanted to say I really hope you will like this video this little different book discussion video and I would love for you guys to subscribe to me if you aren't already and let's get right on into the video Hey guys, welcome to No Makeup Sarah. So I wanted to start with my overall feel for the book. And if I had to give it a rating, I'd probably give it three and a half stars out of five. And that's only because the book I found was way, way better the second half. Um, the first half was a little confusing. The story is told backwards. So first it starts in the present day and then it's told two weeks later backwards and when something isn't linear like time wise i tend to get a little confused just because i'm like there's no context for the days that happen two weeks later and you have to kind of remember what happened in each chapter each previous chapter to kind of see how the next one makes sense if that makes sense and um, I forgot a lot of things. So I'd read the next chapter and be like, why are they talking about this? And then I kind of have to look back and be like, oh yeah. So overall, I think that the book would be really amazing to read the second time around, just because it'll give the story a better context for the first half of the book. But the second half was so intense. Um, definitely didn't predict what was going to happen, which was a lot of fun for me. I'm gonna go look in the, I have like my foundation on my hand, I'm gonna go look in the back of the book because they include questions that you can like discuss in a study group or whatever and I thought I'd answer a couple of them. There's a lot of questions, let's see how many. There's 15, so I'm just gonna kinda like pick and choose which ones I want to answer. I don't know how book clubs work, I've never been to one. So the first question is, consider the motifs of myth and superstition in the story. Who is the monster in the woods? What does the story seem to suggest about myth and superstition, about how, like can I read? About how myth and superstition shape our fears and sense of what is and is not menacing. At the beginning of the novel, like, ooh, look at my foundation, it just like completely melted off my hand. So for the first half of the book, I thought that the creature in the woods was not a creature, I thought it was a human being, and I thought it was um, the person who killed Corinne back in the day. I thought it was a man who was just like creeping about in the woods, like ready to kill Nick at any moment that he got. When the book finished, then I realized that the creature in the woods was actually Nick. She saw herself as a monster basically because she's the one who actually killed Corinne but you are led to believe that it is someone else for basically the whole novel. The book shows that she's really really scared of this monster. She tries to confront it, she chases after it one night but the basic idea is that she is afraid of this thing and 
it makes a lot of sense when you realize that it's her that she's afraid of. She's, af she's afraid of coming to terms that she was the one who killed Corinne. It wasn't Tyler who she thought it was for some reason. She just kind of like chose to ignore reality and she's like, oh yeah, Tyler did it, no biggie. But it was actually her. So she never reaches this monster in the woods, but you can tell that she's just like, she's not wanting to face the truth and her reality at Cooley Ridge, which is why she escaped in the first place. This next question is, why do you think the author chose to tell the story in reverse? How did the reverse telling of the story affect your interpretation of the situation and your assessment of the characters therein? I honestly didn't like it being told in reverse. I think she did it so we can see the character development of Nick, how she is an unreliable narrator because she's lying the whole time. She's lying to the reader. She's lying to herself about what, what happened that night at the fair. But the reverse storytelling was a little confusing. Wasn't a big fan of it until the second half of the book came about and you kind of realized what happened those first few days she was there and you're like oh okay this makes more sense but it was really confusing the first half of the book so for the first half of the book you're on Nicolette's side basically you're like oh my god who killed Corinne what's gonna happen to Nick she's in trouble she better watch out because there's some creature lurking in the woods but then when it gets to the second half of the book, you realize, oh, it was her, she's the monster, she's the one everybody should be afraid of. Also, when the story is told this way, you are kind of suspicious of Jackson and Tyler even, and Daniel, the three male characters in the story, obviously. And then once it gets to the end of it, you realize that, oh, you have to be afraid of the women characters. So Nick and Laura. I believe her name was Daniel's uh, fiance or wife or whatever the hell she is. Draw my palette. Please be okay. It's fine. So you realize that you have to be afraid of those women characters because Nick, you find out, is the one who killed Corinne and Laura killed um, Annalise when she blackmailed Nick and Daniel and their family and stuff. I thought that was kind of cool aspect because it led you in a different direction, but it was a little confusing and I think it could have been done the opposite way. So it's told in a linear way, maybe not giving everything away the first couple days she's there and then you find out later on, but I know she was just trying to be different, like the author was trying to be different. So that's fine, it's great, it was a different story. And I appreciated it once I realized like what was kind of happening because it got a little confusing. Another question it says, at the conclusion of the story, what does Nicolette say defines home? Is her concept of what makes a home surprising? Do you agree with her definition? Explain. So at the very end of the story, Nick decides to stay in Cooley Ridge only because she wants to make sure that she has her family really close to her, her dad, Daniel, and Tyler, so she can protect them from people finding out that she was the one who killed Corinne and that Laura was the one who killed Annalise. Home to her in this sense at Cooley Ridge is basically like a prison, I think, because she doesn't want to be there. She hates it there. I kept saying at the end of the book that she was like, I have to pay my dues, like this is what has to happen. She was basically punishing herself for staying in Cooley Ridge because of the murder. Also, she's like pregnant with Tyler's baby, which I feel like doesn't really add anything to the story. Maybe to further like show that she's stuck in Cooley Ridge, like she can't just leave and go back with Everett when she's pregnant with Tyler's kid. Home for her is clearly not a happy place. She tried to escape it her whole life. She had a new beau, Everett. She was gonna get married to him. And now all of a sudden she is back where she started essentially being in Cooley Ridge, the place that she hated. Editing Sarah's sure gonna love all the ums I'm fucking doing right now. So the reason why Nick ran over Corinne that night was because Corinne forced her or pushed her off the Ferris wheel. I know she was saying like, come on Nick, you can do it to like jump off the Ferris wheel for some reason because like that's what rebellious kids do, I guess, in those days. And then she like, I think she was pushed or something by Corinne and she was pregnant with Tyler's baby then. And then I think maybe she miscarried when she fell from that height because 
yeah, but I don't know. It wasn't really like out there and I think that's why she was pissed about it, but I don't know. And then it kind of was never touched on again. Like, yeah, they had the pregnancy test, which they thought was Corinne's and it turned out to be Nick's, which kind of led to people believing it was Jackson who liked Corinne, but I don't know, it wasn't really explained. Maybe I just, maybe I just skipped over it. I'm a really, really fast reader and I sometimes skip over important parts because that's the way I am. Let's go on to the next one. Why does Nicolette Farrell return to Cooley Ridge? What is her experience of homecoming like? What seems to be the same about the town and the people in it and what seems to be different? How has Nicolette changed or not changed since her time growing up in Cooley Ridge? So Nicolette returns to Cooley Ridge because of her father. He is in a home because he's losing his memory. She comes home because they need to sell her father's house. He doesn't want to sell it, but the house is like old and needs to be cleaned and everything. So she's like, I'm going to come and help Daniel out, her brother a little bit, and then they can clean or whatever and then sell the house and pay for their father's care. When she first comes back to Cooley Ridge, you can tell that she feels wicked out of place. She has a gorgeous ring on her finger. She has Everett, who is like this classy gentleman. And it seems like Cooley Ridge is something that she feels like she is above. She hates it there. She's like, I'm only gonna spend a couple days here, or not a couple days. She planned on coming for two months. There seems to be a lot of tension in the town about Corinne, because it's a small town. So if a big murder happens, not a big murder, just a murder. What makes it a big murder? If a murder happens, like the town's gonna talk about it and that's gonna be the talk for years. Everybody's a little suspicious of Nicolette just because she hasn't been there in a while. And you can tell the town kind of keeps to themselves and protects their own. And she seems to not be a part of that anymore. She meets up with Jackson and he's like, what are you doing here? She meets up with Tyler and you find out that they had like a thing going on, but when she first meets him, you, you can kind of see that she's not really into it. And she sees his girlfriend, Annalise, who dies later on. And Nicolette just seems to be like a little judgmental bitch, let's be honest. So the last part of that question was how has Nicolette changed or not changed since her time growing up in Cooley Ridge? In the beginning of the novel, you feel like she is a changed person. She seems like she is above Cooley Ridge. She's moving on. She's living in a different town with her fiance. She's planning a wedding. You can tell that she just feels like an outsider looking in. Then as the novel progresses, you realize that she really hasn't changed. In fact, she actually comes to terms with her killing Corinne and she realizes that it was her near the end of the novel. So she does change a little bit in that respect, but you can tell that she just feels like she fits right into Cooley Ridge again. She's with Tyler at the end of the novel, who she was with back like 15 years, I think it was previously, when they were all kids. And she still chooses to hide the fact that she was the one who murdered Corinne. So she really hasn't changed in that respect. She's kind of moved back to her 18 year old self. She basically came back to Cooley Ridge seeming like a different person, but it turns out it was her same self all along. So the next question is evaluate the theme of memory in the book. Are the memories of the characters reliable? Why or why not? What does this suggest about the way that time influences our perspective and how the past affects the future? So this clearly is one of the biggest themes in the book because the book is told through the memory of Nick. At the beginning of the novel, it seems like her uh, interpretation of events that have happened in the past are pretty accurate. You can tell that she is hiding something. She says little things throughout the novel where she's like, okay, I'm glad they didn't find out about this. And you're like, okay, she knows something. But what I thought it was is that she was protecting either Tyler or Daniel. She knew one of them killed Corinne back in the day and she was protecting them. I thought it was Daniel for a really long time. Then you find out at the end of the novel that it was actually Nick that killed Corinne and you're like, oh shit, she was like basically lying the whole time. Uh, I forgot an important thing. Her father kept mentioning like, I saw that girl on the porch, I saw that girl, but his memory isn't reliable because he's losing his mind. So he wasn't very reliable and it seemed like Nick was trying to figure out what he was meaning by that. So. I thought that she was trying to figure out who killed 
Corinne because she's like, well, what do you mean by that, Dad? Like, who did that? And then you realize, like, she was just nervous because she's like, oh shit, my dad remembers uh, something really important from that night. I thought it was cool that, like, her dad actually saw his daughter kill Corinne and then he decided to, like, take the body away and hide it for her and that's what he was remembering. The other characters, like Daniel, seemed, he wasn't my favorite, he just had a temper, you can tell he had a temper, and that was it. Tyler was kind of flat for me too, he just kind of hung around. At the end it got really good because you can tell that he actually loved Nick, but I mean he wasn't the greatest. Obviously the memories of these people are not reliable because they all had something to hide. Kind of over these questions right now, maybe I'll just like say my little last tidbits of what I thought of the novel at this point in time, because the other questions are like really long and I feel like I'm in school, so we're not gonna do that now. I don't know if I will read this book again, just because I have so many in my lineup right now that the thought of just rereading something that I just finished is a little like, why? Even though I think I would appreciate it better, at the end I'm like, oh, okay, so that's what happened. That's pretty much all you need to know, really. That's pretty much, I'm pretty, I'm pretty just satisfied. Can I talk? I'm pretty satisfied with that alone, so I don't know. So even though I wasn't really a big fan of the way it was told backwards, I guess it did make sense at the end why it was told that way. And it was kind of cool figuring out like what happened the very first night she was there. Most importantly, the second night. The second night was where I believe that they found Corinne's body in their garage and they moved it. So that was really exciting because I was like, oh shit, it's been in their house all along. But just say a lot of butts too, Sarah. Like, my editing self is really gonna like this. It's been a while since I filmed, so every time I go back to filming, after a while, like, I seem to not be able to talk very well, so this little book discussion, book club review might not be as good as I hope my future ones will be when I can figure out how to English. We'll see how that goes. But it was a really good read. I blasted through it, especially the second half. It was actually a little difficult to... That took away all the orange that I put on my lid. It was a little difficult to get into at first, and I find that happens a lot when I read books because I like to know and be in it before I can get really appreciative of it. And when it's like kind of at the beginning and boring and you don't know what's happening, I tend to not pay attention. <laughs> which is maybe why I didn't like the first half of the book that much and then the second half just got so much better. So I clearly just did the rest of my makeup because I just, um, I think I'm done talking about this book right now. But I would love for you guys to comment down below if you have read it, anything you'd like to discuss, any thoughts that you had about it, what you thought about the book. I would love to talk about it more. I really hope you guys liked this video. It's totally not what I usually do. I thought it was cool though because I really like reading these thrillers and I blast through so many of them and I just thought it would be fun to discuss them and talk about them and see what everybody else thought. So yeah, if you'd like to see more videos like this one, actually, before we do that. So for next week, the book I'm going to be talking about is The Last Mrs. Parish by Liv Constantine. So if you have read it, great, keep an eye out for that video, and if not, I think you can finish this in a week. I know it's pretty long, but it's a very, very easy read. So yeah, thank you guys for joining me today, and I really hope you guys liked this video. Please give it a like if you've liked it, and please, please comment, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!